what in the Sam Hill is row reduction? How do you do it? Uh, what's the point of it? Um, these are the kinds of things we're going to discuss in this video. So over here on the left, you can see a system of two linear equations, right? It's, it has two unknown variables, x1 and x2. And the goal um, that we have is that we want to find the solution set to this system of equations. So what is the solution set? It's nothing but all the pairs x1, x2 that satisfy both of the equations. So when you get a pair of numbers, one for x1 and one for x2, and then you plug them in for x1 and x2 in the linear system, then you should simplify and get 3 equals 3 and 2 equals 2. So all those pairs x1, x2 form the solution set to the linear system of equations. Sometimes the solution set's going to have infinitely many pairs. Sometimes there's going to be just one pair. Sometimes there'll be no pairs. And we're going to discuss that those cases in a later video. Um, but the topic of this video, how do we actually solve this system and to do that we're going to use raw operations but first um think about all the ways you can solve this in your algebra class in high school you probably learned like substitution or maybe you can do elimination where you cancel one of the variables and you can solve and then back substitute and get the other unknown variable we want a more systematic way to do this and so that's why we can represent this system in a different way so what's a different way to represent this well we have the matrix equation that looks like this where we do a matrix times x1, x2 equals 3, 2. And if this looks foreign to you, then check out my video on the different ways to represent a linear system of equations, and I'll link to that in this video. Um, this is the matrix equation, but we're actually not going to use this one. We're going to use the augmented matrix representation. And that looks like this. Okay. And you have this vertical line, your augmented column. And we're going to try to transform this matrix somehow to look a little bit different. We want it to look like this. And I'm going to show you these two numbers, which is going to spoil the answer. But if we had our augmented matrix look like this, remember this is the x1 column, this is the x2 column, and this is your right-hand side. So if you rewrote this in two equations, you would get x1, 1 times x1, plus 0 times x2 equals negative 1. And you would get 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 equals 2. And then these obviously go away, and you get x1 equals negative 1, and x2 equals 2. And just like that, you have your pair. You have your solution set. Now, in this case, there's only one solution. Like I said, we'll talk about the cases when there are infinitely many solutions or no solutions. But you can prove this to yourself. You can plug in negative 1 for x1 and 2 for x2 up here, and you should get that this system of equations is satisfied. The question is, what is this step here? How do we go from this augmented matrix to this augmented matrix without changing the solution set to the system? And that's where elementary row operations come in. So we are going to perform what's called elementary row operations to this augmented matrix, transform it into this matrix. And the key point to realize about elementary row operations is that they're made such that they do not change the solution set to the system of equations. So this system of equations here, which we got um, from this augmented matrix, looks a, a whole lot different from this one. But since we only used elementary row operations to go from this matrix to this one, the solution set to this system is the same as the solution set to this system, okay? So, from lecture, who remembers the three elementary row operations? The first one is, doesn't matter what order you write them in, but one of them is you can swap rows, right? So when we take this matrix, and in the process of transforming it into this matrix, if, some, if at some point we need to swap the rows, we're allowed to do that. Because if you think about it, that doesn't change the solution set, right? That's just like writing this equation after writing this equation. That doesn't change the solution set. Okay, the second elementary row operation, type of row operation you can do, is scaling a row, uh, but it has to be by a non-zero factor. Right? If you scale a row by zero, like up here, that'd be like multiplying both sides by zero, then you're losing information. 
and you're changing the solutions. But if you scale by a non-zero factor, that's just like multiplying both sides of the equation by the same number, and then that's allowed. Okay, the third row operation, which is the most tricky, but is, is still not that bad. You can add um, a multiple of some row to another row. Okay, and you'll see that in action here really quick. Let's actually go through and row reduce this matrix to this matrix, okay? So we start off with the given system, one, two, three, four, three, two. This is an augmented matrix, so it has that vertical line. What's the first step? So we wanna make this left side look like one, zero, zero, one. So the first thing we can do is, well, we already have a one up here. Let's try to get a zero below it. So we can do this third um, elementary row operation to accomplish that. So we can say row, this is how I show my work. We say row two equals row two minus four times row one. Now a couple things. This is not an equal sign in its conventional sense. This is, for all my computer programmers out there, this is the assignment operator. So what this means is we take row two minus four times row one, and whatever that is, we overwrite what row two used to be. Okay, so we assign it to row two. So this means you take all the entries in row two and you subtract four times the corresponding entry in row one, and then you replace that entry. So let me just show you. We're doing this to row two, so it doesn't affect row one. So we still have one, two, three up here. Then row two, we get, we, go, we do the first entry in row two, four, and it becomes four minus four times its corresponding row one entry. So four minus four times one, we get zero. That's why I picked minus four here, is to get a zero. And then we say three minus four times two. So that's three minus eight, which is negative five. And then we say two minus four times three. It's two minus 12, negative 10. Okay, how can we get this to look even closer to one, zero, zero, one? Well, we can make this a one, but that seems pretty difficult given only these three rules. So let's instead make this a, a one by scaling row two by negative one fifth. Okay, so now we say row two equals negative one fifth times row two. Row two becomes negative one fifth times row two. And we get one, two, three, zero, one, two. That looks a lot better. Okay, and then the last step is we need to get a zero in this entry. So how can we do that? We can use row operation number three again. We can say, which is called row replacement. So we can say row one becomes, we replace it with what row one used to be, but each entry is added is, um, we subtract two times its corresponding entry from row two. Okay, so what does that get us? It gets us this matrix. Uh, we do one minus two times zero, it's just one. Then we say two minus two times one is zero, perfect. That's why we picked minus two. And then three minus two times two is negative one. And then row two didn't change. We didn't do any row operations to row two. So look, we have our augmented matrix where we have, this is called the identity matrix, um, where we have ones along the diagonal and zero everywhere else. Now we can just read out our solutions, right? So as I mentioned before, we now we can just say x1 equals negative one and x2 equals two, right? So we can write this as a vector, negative one, two, and this vector is the x vector in the matrix equation. So I'm just tying this back all the way up here the matrix, sorry, the matrix equation, this x1, x2 vector, all of those vectors forms the solution set. So in this case, there's only one x vector, but uh, this is a x equals b. So we found this vector and it, and it makes up the solution set. Um, and now you can check, right? You can plug in x1 equals negative one, x2 equals two, up here in this original equation, and assuming we did everything right, you will get that the system is satisfied. Okay, in the next video, we're going to do, we're going to drill some row operation questions. And uh, I'm going to show you my technique so that you can do it as quickly as possible.